You'll realise how large this Isle of Man flag catch really is when you see fully grown men standing in the cockpit near the stern as it motors past us as we sit at anchor the day before we leave Tahiti. We're leaving the main harbour of Papiete for the last time as we sail away from Tahiti, heading on the short passage over to the island of Morea. The island of Tahiti disappears off our stern, covered with low cloud cover. As we turn, we have the island of Maria coming into view very quickly. We anchored in the beautiful Bay de Cook for the one night we stayed there. It's a beautiful bay, calm conditions and stunning backdrops of mountains all the way around. The next morning we leave Bay de Cook nice and early and head around to the Bay de Opunohu to catch up with someone we haven't seen for quite some time. We can't help but admire the absolute stunning scenery as we sail around this beautiful island of Morea. Everywhere we looked, each bay was as breathtaking as the last. We carefully approach the pass, lining up the port and starboard marks as we enter the bay. 
being careful to avoid the coral that awaits each side for unsuspecting skippers. We finally catch up with who we've been looking for. None other than La Vagabond, with Riley and Elena on board. And even at this hour of the morning, Elena is sitting up in the cockpit reading a book. It's always good to catch up with friends. We haven't seen these two since Grenada last year. <laughs> Elena and Riley are always welcome on board Anacam. They come over for a coffee and a chat. See you later, La Vagabond. See you later, Elena and Riley. And goodbye to Morea as we set our course for the Society Islands and Bora Bora. It's time to roll a bit of sail out and get this passage underway. We sail with only a very small percentage of our sails up, as there are plenty of squalls about, and we have time on our side, so we keep our speed down to a conservative six knots for the first half of this passage. We sailed with the perfect wind angle, allowing us to run straight up the rum line. We sailed with this exact same setup right through till about an hour before dawn. We didn't touch a thing. This will be a similar heading we will use for most of our journey back to Australia. We'll be following the setting of the sun each day.
We have a look at our chart plotter we have running on one of our computers on board and notice the AIS signal of a French flag boat about five miles astern running up the same run line. Annie's having a lay down in the saloon while she is off watch. She's saying something about rock and roll, rock and roll. As it's getting closer to sunset, we notice a line of squalls fast approaching from the northeast. Call it good luck, or call it good management, or whatever you like, but we managed to dodge most of these squalls throughout the night until about an hour before dawn, and one smacked us at 42 knots. Wasn't pleasant at all. The dawn of a new day, even on an overcast day, the sunrises out here in the Pacific are still pretty special. We sail up past the island of Reatea on our way through to Bora Bora. Land Ho! That would be the island of Bora Bora you can see off in the distance up through the rigging, just off our starboard bow. You know Annie's getting serious when she flips her hat back. It's look out and game on for a very large catamaran which we're able to pass and put some distance between us. And yes, you guessed it, we arrive first at the red and the green marks, the port and starboard marks as we enter the lagoon at the island of Bora Bora. We then take a tour right around as far as we could go on the east side of the island inside the lagoon looking for any buddy boats that may have arrived here before us.
we catch up with a couple of friends, Kevin and Jonah Lynn, on their beautiful catamaran called Mango. We have chosen a beautiful anchorage inside the lagoon here in Bora Bora, alongside the small island of Tuapua. <laughs> 